Can a knife be life changing? I'm not sure, but somebody went to pretty great lengths to convince me. This is the Hogue Deca Magna Cut. Stick around, I'm gonna explain why this knife may be a quantum leap is strong, but a leap ahead when it comes to knife technology, why you care, and why this beats out its nearest competitor in a lot of different categories. Stay tuned. I apologize ahead of time, but I got to go into story time just a little bit to make you understand the context of this knife and why you care. This is a Benchmade Bug Out. Now the Benchmade Bug Out has some things going for it. It's ultra lightweight. In fact, if I pull out the scale of doom here and we place it on the scale, it is 1.9 ounces. When I first heard of this knife, it was at the Warrior Expo in, oh Lord, it was, I can't even tell you when, but it was a long time ago, Warrior Expo East down in Virginia Beach. Went to the Benchmade booth, and before I got up there, there was a guy talking to the Benchmade reps, somewhat unassuming fellow, but I later found out he was a Secret Service guy. And his quote about this knife at the time was life-changing. Imagine that kind of quote, life-changing. You know, here we have a knife that is lightweight, reasonable amount of blade length, but what it really has over a lot of other knives is for its size, and weight, it is a lot of knife. Shorts pocket, suit pocket, whatever, it just disappears. And from that perspective, at the time, it was, it was kind of a breakthrough. Very nice locking mechanism, deep carry pocket clip. The good things about this knife are many. S30V steel on this. They've done a bunch of variants of it, but its initial release was great. What it started to get over time were two things kind of against it, and maybe three. One, Benchmade did some things that were politically unpalatable to people. I won't get into it, but if you know, you know. So there are a lot of people out there who won't buy Benchmade. 100% get it. Two, a lot of people find the handle to be somewhat flimsy feeling, and I don't know if I'll be able to show you on camera, but if you squeeze really hard, the handle scales will flex. I don't think that's an indictment of the overall durability of the knife, but some people find it to be fairly flimsy. And more recently, when we get into the bug out, now this is a $162 knife. And for 162 bucks, you can buy a lot of knife these days. So a lot of people have real issues with this knife. And I can't say that I blame them such that they probably are not even inclined to buy it, own it, mess with any of the variants. For $162, now you've got S30V steel, which is a good steel, but not a great steel, and a lightweight package. The thing about this knife is when it was at the price point it was at initially, about 120 bucks, it was a pretty darn good knife. Now I realize, you know, things have gotten a little rougher when it comes to inflation, but nevertheless, there are a lot of people who were not interested in this knife anymore because of those factors that I just mentioned. Oh, side note, when Spyderco does a lightweight handle design, they usually end up charging less because it's fiberglass reinforced nylon and not G10 or a more exotic material. Benchmade takes what is in theory a cheaper handle material and they end up charging more for it. So maybe even from that perspective, maybe a little bit freaking annoying. So let's set aside the bug out. Let's just retire the bug out. And let's talk about the Hogue Deca Magna Cut. If you look, they are very similar in size. Similar deep carry pocket clip, albeit a silver instead of black. Similar locking mechanism with these, right? Because it's a crossbar locking mechanism. Benchmade had the patent on what they call their axis lock. That went away. So now you see a lot of different knife manufacturers using this locking mechanism. It is ambidextrous. It keeps your fingers out of the way of the blade. So you don't need to put your finger anywhere in here to close the blade. You can flick it with one hand. It's pretty easy and flick it closed if you're a little more coordinated than me. Similar locking mechanisms, similar colors, although this is available in other colors. Now here are a few things to consider. If we bring back the scale of doom and I weigh the Hogue Deca on it, you see that it is 0.2 ounces heavier than the bug out really 0.2 ounces. You've got to be princess in the P-level finicky to be able to tell the difference between 1.9 and 2.1 ounces. So let's just say it's the same weight. If we look at the overall length when they are extended, uh, let me center those up, you can see that the overall length is almost exactly the same. The blade length itself 
is almost exactly the same. And if you stack one on top of the other back and forth, you see that the Hogue actually has a little more belly on the blade profile. But in terms of general usability, I find them to be almost identical. Here's where things get a little more interesting. One, Hogue doesn't have the same political backblast that Benchmade does. So if you've got political objections to this, and I get it, I'm not saying you shouldn't, then no big. Hogue doesn't have that problem too. The flimsiness of the handle feel where you can squeeze it. The Hogue has an additional post on the back and that virtually eliminates handle flex because of that additional post. And that may very well be the source of the additional weight because they're both mostly linerless. Like they've got a liner up toward the front, but they do not have a complete liner that goes the entire length of the scale, which you can see a little bit here, I think think and same thing you can see a little bit and I think that the Hogue actually has a little bit longer of a liner it goes halfway so in terms of sturdiness feel the Hogue wins so there's two right we've got knife with no political issues and less flimsy feeling so more sturdy feeling when it comes to the blade steel and look I don't want to go all knife nerdy on you guys I know I can get a little stupid with that but S30V is at this point over 10 years old, which in knife steel years is still pretty young, but this is not the new kid on the block. Many new steels have come out that are better than S30. Not that S30 is bad. If you got an S30 knife, I'm not saying, oh my God, throw it away, worst thing ever, but there are better steels than S30. This has magna cut steel, and I'm gonna talk about that in a second, but let me mention pricing. 162 bucks, 127 bucks right now. This is a knife that's got all the same features and superior steel and no political weird stuff and it is a much better knife for the money in my opinion and it may be a better knife period even if we take budget out of the way here's the knife nerd stuff apologize for the nerdiness magna cut steel is a brand new steel if it is two years old i will be shocked magna cut steel is not the brainchild of a steel company. It is the brainchild of an individual who's got a lot of chemistry background and metallurgy knowledge, who realized that there was probably a sweet spot in terms of knife steel formulation that no one had yet really happened upon. And so he, in his hypothesis, ended up approaching Crucible and Crucible agreed to do a run of this steel. Now when Crucible does a run of steel, they don't have like a little teeny vat like where they just do like a little teeny bit. If they do a run of steel, it is a full run of steel. So it is a gamble for them, right? Because if they do a full run of steel and they have to pull it, pour it out, then they lose all that money. But he convinced them. So they did. And as it turns out, Magna Cut has a lot of really interesting properties. Now, it is not greater than any other knife in any one property. When it comes to say edge, holding edge retention and sharpness that you can achieve, there are steels out there that can equal Magna Cut, no lie. When it comes to rust resistance, corrosion resistance, there are steels that can equal Magna Cut in that. But by the way, they're not the same steels as those edge holding steels. When it comes to toughness, there are steels out there that can match Magna Cut, but now you're talking about yet a third variety of steel. Ease of sharpening. This is easier to sharpen than a lot of the super steels. Same problem. So this is basically three or four different best qualities all wrapped up in one steel. In my opinion right now, if you want a knife and it is available in Magna Cut, that is your option. You should not be looking at any other option. And I'm talking about folder, hard use outdoors, anything like that does not matter. Right now, Magna Cut is the steel to beat. It is such a revolution in steel that to, to put it bluntly, guys, there's really only two reasons now to buy a knife that is not in Magna Cut. The first, if you like that knife, its properties, its size, its shape, whatever is perfect for your job, but it's just not offered in Magna Cut, then you don't buy Magna Cut. Two, if you don't want to spend Magna Cut money, and to be clear, guys, Right now, Magna Cut money is not like crazy, crazy expensive, but it's certainly expensive. If you wanted a knife that's cheaper than this knife, then you're probably gonna end up going away from Magna Cut. There are some decent options out there, but if your budget allows for it and that knife is made in Magna Cut, then in my opinion, guys, this is the one to get. I can't state it any more plainly than that. And it, to give you some idea of how good this steel is, uh, the Knife Center, David C. Anderson of the Knife Center, on one of his Q and A's, 
was asked, does Magna Cut make everything else obsolete? Uh, well, let me let me just flash to it. I'm just gonna cut to it. I want you to listen to that clip and then I'm gonna come back. Please assure me that Magna Cut steel is not going to make most other steels irrelevant. Well, let me assure you, sir, that Magna Cut steel is not going to make all other steels irrelevant. It is a really cool steel. It is a game changing steel. However, so what he's basically saying without saying it is yes, he and his guy Thomas are both struggling really hard to not just outright say, yes, this obsoletes every other steel because they've got a whole inventory of knives. They've got to move and I get it. They should not be telling people to not buy other knives and just wait for Magna Cut. It really kind of screws them. So from their perspective, yeah, you've got to allow for some other steels. But from my perspective, there are very few knives right now that I am interested in that are not made out of Magna Cut. I'm sorry I went all knife steel nerdy on you, but guys, in general, I'm really excited about this knife. There are very few knives that I've been excited about recently, really at any price point, but this is definitely one of them. This is a class beater. It crushes this knife in every category except for weight, and it's so darn close, it's a wash. Every other category, price, performance, locking mechanism, it's either the same or better in every respect. If you were thinking about a Benchmade bug out, nope, this is the one to get. Comes in fairly plain packaging. I won't break out the packaging, do a reverse unboxing. Comes a little pouch for it too, a sticker and some RAND documentation, but this is a brilliant knife. It, the knife design was a Greg Elshowitz design. He's been making knives for a long, long time. If you Google him, you'll see what I'm talking about. The pocket clip is reversible. So if you're a lefty weirdo like me, you're good to go. You got a lanyard hole. All of the goodies that I want in a knife, this has them. This is a knife that goes with me to work in a suit when I'm running around in shorts. This can do it all. If I end up having to take a swim with it, I don't care because this steel is almost impervious to any sort of corrosion. I would go swim with this in the ocean. I wouldn't even care. I just rinse it off when I was done. I'm going to end this here. I don't want to go any further and I'm not going to do a metal close up. They also offer it in black. But right now, guys, this, this knife, this is a freaking nice knife. It really is. Once again, I state for the record, the Hogue Deca Magna Cut. If you don't have one of these and you any of this is even remotely interesting to you, I would run out and get one. That's all I'm going to say for now, guys. Take care, stay safe, and I will talk to you soon. Get them, Jay.